On behalf of Michael, Stephen, Rucci, Nicholas and I, I would like to welcome you to the Construction Management Plan presentation for the Robsons Road Access presented by Group 10. This presentation provides a brief summary of the content in each section available in the Construction Management Plan document. Without further ado, Stephen will start us off with a risk management plan. A good risk management plan is an essential criteria for any major project. The purpose of this risk management plan is to identify, assess and prioritise the design, delivery and handover risks in order to organise efforts to minimise, monitor and control the likelihood and or the consequence of an unfortunate event. A risk management plan is used to provide a consistent risk management framework across the project that is transparent and open about risks. It provides stakeholders with quality assurance that the risks are being well managed and promotes a culture of risk awareness and management that all personnel can incorporate into work. The risk management plan is site specific and addresses responsibilities for risks and emergency procedures. The risk rating is calculated by multiplying the identified consequence rating with the likelihood rating. The higher the score, the more urgent the risk is. This table shows the general response to different levels of risk. The risk register demonstrates risk ratings for identified risks before and after mitigation actions. The risk management framework is designed to be easy to follow and add new risks to if they arise. Visible on the slide is the project schedule visualised on Project Libra. By scheduling the various tasks involved in the construction project, the completion date was estimated to be approximately 80 days. This duration has not yet had a contingency applied to it, and therefore, the expected completion date has been determined as 88 days. Within this period, it is assumed that approval time takes a maximum of 14 days and material procurement takes maximum 7 days. Alongside the schedule is a Gantt chart. This visualises each task in terms of duration and provides a reference as to which tasks take longer as well as shows the critical path of which the project proceeds. Furthermore, the three main phases, detailed design, construction and post-construction phases, can be seen on the chart from the overarching brackets above their corresponding tasks. These details are further discussed in the construction management plan document. Now Michael will take us through costing. So now onto the costing. The cost was broken down into the three sections of the schedule including detailed design phase, construction phase and post-construction phase and all tasks were priced. These costs were estimates of the Cordell cost guide and gave us a total cost of roughly $230,000. Risk can however have a major impact on the cost of the overall project with the risks identified and mitigated further in the risk register. Key risks would be the extension of the finish date past the schedule contingency fuel prices, material and resource unavailability. 10% contingency to the cost was added to account for variance in the estimate and these risks, as well as a 5% profit margin added to the final bid of, 200 and, of roughly 270000 The environmental considerations gives an introduction to the environmental management plan, outlining the environmental goals of the project and demonstrating the importance of environmental performance for stakeholder satisfaction. Health and safety is vital for the construction stage of the project to commence. The WHS considerations emphasizes the main causes of injury to workers on construction sites, control methods, training and induction, and compensation and insurance. It was assumed that the soil was sound for construction, the area had no significant value, and the site had access to all essential services. Some site constraints include worker safety due to local traffic, the weather, flow paths needing diversion, and waste management on site. The environmental management plan covers topics such as erosion and sediment management, dust and noise pollution, flora and fauna management, and waste management. The site WHS plan covers key points such as dealing with fatigue, being hit by moving objects, workplace accidents, loud noises and car accidents. More info on these points and their strategies of management can be found in the report. The Industrial Relations Management Plan outlines how building unions, on-site workers, labourers, administration and some government bodies influence the site. 
their effects and management plans are showcased more in the report and can be seen in the table. The stakeholder management plan has an in-depth analysis of the key stakeholders such as the local councils, residences, environmental groups and university members. The report shows how their issues can be managed, their level of influence on the project and our objectives with each stakeholder. This is showcased in this table. Ruchi will now talk you through the monitoring and control plan. Hello everyone, greetings of the day. Here's I'm going to talk about monitoring and control plan. Management of construction and control process includes the following things like the examination and the assessment of the estimated and measured outcomes. Monitoring process comes with the several setbacks like accumulate, measure and compare, access and replan, accepting this as the situation, plan, document and take the healing exercise. For the success of project, improved communication is important. There must be communication between stakeholders and when the case is not so, project can fail. Now I'm going to talk about key performance indicators for the management of the construction project. They are scheduling, budgeting and quality. Scheduling of the adjustment when laborers are on leave. The on-time completion of the project, etc. Quality of the project, safety assurance, quality control and these are some important things. Budget is the third key indicator. Under the budget, there are certain points that relate. They are spending variances, spending creation, subleties in budget. Now I'm going to talk about quality assurance and control. It is important for the success of construction project. A major and large number of contractors are a part of construction project and the quality assurance is thus necessary and due to the involvement of the large number of stakeholders, quality remains an important factor of the success of the construction. Handover is crucial to the successful completion of a project and involves the transfer of the completed construction project over to the owner. This transfer includes all important information from the project. For a successful handover, this information must be clear and must be started earlier in the life of the project for a successful change in management. Key issues arising from a poor handover include lack of understanding from owner, poor relationship developed, and requests for late changes. Our handover will include a draft building manual, guide to the user's building or project, tested and up-to-date commission data, licenses and certification. Ultimately, through this construction management plan for Robson Road access for UOW, we should be able to achieve a successful success in the completion of the project.